Alfred Lothar Wegener was a German polar researcher, geophysicist, and meteorologist. During his lifetime he was primarily known for his achievements in meteorology and as a pioneer of polar research, but today he is most remembered as the originator of the theory of continental drift by hypothesizing in 1912 that the continents are slowly drifting around the Earth. His hypothesis was controversial and not widely accepted until the 1950s, when numerous discoveries such as paleomagnetism provided strong support for continental drift, and thereby a substantial basis for today's model of plate tectonics. Wegener was involved in several expeditions to Greenland to study polar air circulation before the existence of the jet stream was accepted. Expedition participants made many meteorological observations and achieved the first ever overwintering on the inland Greenland ice sheet as well as the first ever boring of ice cores on a moving Arctic glacier. Biography Early Life and Education Alfred Wegener was born in Berlin on November 1, 1880 as the youngest of five children in a clergyman's family. His father, Richard Wegener, was a theologian and teacher of classical languages at the Berlinisches Gymnasium zum Grau in Kloster. In 1886 his family purchased a former manor house near Rheinsberg, which they used as a vacation home. Today there is an Alfred Wegener Memorial Site and Tourist Information Office in a nearby building that was once the local schoolhouse. He was cousin to movie pioneer Paul Wegener. Wegener attended school at the on Wallstrasse in Berlin, a fact which is memorialized on a plaque on this protected building, now a school of music, graduating as the best in his class. Afterward he studied physics, meteorology, and astronomy in Berlin, Heidelberg and Innsbruck. From 1902 to 1903 during his studies he was an assistant at the Urania Astronomical Observatory. He obtained a doctorate in astronomy in 1905 based on a dissertation written under the supervision of Julius Boschinger at, today Humboldt University, Berlin. Wegener had always maintained a strong interest in the developing fields of meteorology and climatology and his studies afterwards focused on these disciplines. In 1905 Wegener became an assistant at the Aeronautisches Observatorium Lindenburg near Bieskau. He worked there with his brother Kurt, two years his senior, who was likewise a scientist with an interest in meteorology and polar research. The two pioneered the use of weather balloons to track air masses. On a balloon ascent undertaken to carry out meteorological investigations and to test a celestial navigation method using a particular type of quadrant, Libellan quadrant, the Wegener brothers set a new record for a continuous balloon flight, remaining aloft 52.5 hours from April 57, 1906. First Greenland Expedition and Years in Marburg In that same year 1906, Wegener participated in the first of his four Greenland expeditions, later regarding this experience as marking a decisive turning point in his life. The expedition was led by the Dane Ludwig Milius Eriksson and charged with studying the last unknown portion of the northeastern coast of Greenland. During the expedition Wegener constructed the first meteorological station in Greenland near Denmark Schavn, where he launched kites and tethered balloons to make meteorological measurements in an Arctic climatic zone. Here Wegener also made his first acquaintance with death in a wilderness of ice when the expedition leader and two of his colleagues died on an exploratory trip undertaken with sled dogs. After his return in 1908 and until World War I, Wegener was a lecturer in meteorology, applied astronomy, and cosmic physics at the University of Marburg. His students and colleagues in Marburg particularly valued his ability to clearly and understandably explain even complex topics and current research findings without sacrificing precision. His lectures formed the basis of what was to become a standard textbook in meteorology, first written in 1909-1910, Thermodynamic der Atmosphere, Thermodynamics of the Atmosphere, in which he incorporated many of the results of the Greenland expedition. On January 6, 1912 he publicized his first thoughts about continental drift in a lecture at a session of the Geologischen Vereinigung at the Senckenberg Museum, Frankfurt am Main and in three articles in the journal Petermann's Geographisk Mitte Lungen. Second Greenland Expedition After a stopover in Iceland to purchase and test ponies as pack animals, the expedition arrived in Denmark Schavn. Even before the trip to the inland ice began the expedition was almost annihilated by a calving glacier. 
The Danish expedition leader, Johan Peter Cook, broke his leg when he fell into a glacier crevasse and spent months recovering in a sickbed. Wegener and Cook were the first to winter on the inland ice in northeast Greenland. Inside their hut they drilled to a depth of 25 m with an auger. In summer 1913 the team crossed the inland ice, the four expedition participants covering a distance twice as long as Fridtjof Nansen's southern Greenland crossing in 1888. Only a few kilometers from the western Greenland settlement of Kanjursuachuk the small team ran out of food while struggling to find their way through difficult glacial breakup terrain. But at the last moment, after the last pony and dog had been eaten, they were picked up at a fjord by the clergyman of Upper Navuk, who just happened to be visiting a remote congregation at the time. Later in 1913 after his return Wegener married Els Koppen, the daughter of his former teacher and mentor the meteorologist Oledemir Koppen. The young pair lived in Marburg, where Wegner resumed his university lectureship. World War I As an infantry reserve officer Wegener was immediately called up when the First World War began in 1914. On the war front in Belgium he experienced fierce fighting but his term lasted only a few months, after being wounded twice he was declared unfit for active service and assigned to the Army Weather Service. This activity required him to travel constantly between various weather stations in Germany, on the Balkans, on the Western Front and in the Baltic region. Nevertheless, he was able in 1915 to complete the first version of his major work, Die Entstehung der Kontinent und Oceanie, The Origin of Continents and Oceans. His brother Kurt remarked that Alfred Wegener's motivation was to re-establish the connection between geophysics on the one hand and geography and geology on the other, which had become completely ruptured because of the specialized development of these branches of science. Interest in this small publication was however low, also because of wartime chaos. By the end of the war Wegener had published almost 20 additional meteorological and geophysical papers in which he repeatedly embarked for new scientific frontiers. In 1917 he undertook a scientific investigation of the Treza meteorite. Post-war period and third expedition Wegener obtained a position as a meteorologist at the German Naval Observatory, Deutsche Seewart, and moved to Hamburg with his wife and their two daughters. In 1921 he was appointed senior lecturer at the new University of Hamburg. From 1919 to 1923 Wegener did pioneering work on reconstructing the climate of past eras, now known as paleoclimatology, closely in collaboration with Maludin Milankovic, publishing Die Klimat der Geologischen Vorzeit, The Climates of the Geological Past, together with his father-in-law, Vladimir Koppen, in 1924. In 1922 the third, fully revised edition of The Origin of Continents and Oceans appeared, and discussion began on his theory of continental drift, first in the German language area and later internationally. Withering criticism was the response of most experts. In 1924 Wegener was appointed to a professorship in meteorology and geophysics in Graz, which finally provided him with a secure position for himself and his family. He concentrated on physics and the optics of the atmosphere as well as the study of tornadoes. Scientific assessment of his second Greenland expedition, ice measurements, atmospheric optics, etc., continued to the end of the 1920s. In November 1926 Wegener presented his continental drift theory at a symposium of the American Association of Petroleum Geologists in New York City, again earning rejection from everyone but the chairman. Three years later the fourth and final expanded edition of The Origin of Continents and Oceans appeared. In 1929 Wegener embarked on his third trip to Greenland, which laid the groundwork for a later main expedition and included a test of an innovative, propeller-driven snowmobile. Fourth and Last Expedition Wegener's last Greenland expedition was in 1930. The 14 participants under his leadership were to establish three permanent stations from which the thickness of the Greenland ice sheet could be measured and year-round Arctic weather observations made. Wegener felt personally responsible for the expedition's success, as the German government had contributed $120,000, $1.5 million in 2007 dollars. Success depended on enough provisions being transferred from West Camp to, Mid-Ice 
for two men to winter there, and this was a factor in the decision that led to his death. Owing to a late thaw, the expedition was six weeks behind schedule and, as summer ended, the men had sent a message that they had insufficient fuel and so would return on October 20. On September 24, although the route markers were by now largely buried under snow, Wagoner set out with 13 Greenlanders and his meteorologist Fritz Lowy to supply the camp by dog sled. During the journey, the temperature reached and Lowy's toes became so frostbitten they had to be amputated with a penknife without anesthetic. Twelve of the Greenlanders returned to West Camp. On October 19 the remaining three members of the expedition reached. There being only enough supplies for three at Wagoner and Rasmus Willemsen took two dog sleds and made for West Camp. They took no food for the dogs and killed them one by one to feed the rest until they could run only one sled. While Willemsen rode the sled, Wagoner had to use skis, but they never reached the camp, Wagoner died and Willemsen was never seen again. The expedition was completed by his brother, Kurt Wagoner. This expedition inspired the Greenland Expedition episode of Adam Melford and John Butchan's 1933 novel A Prince of the Captivity. Death Wagoner died in Clarinatania, Greenland, in November 1930. Willemsen had buried the body with great care, and a pair of skis marked the grave site. After burying Wagoner, Willemsen had resumed his journey to West Camp, but was never seen again. Six months later, on May 12, 1931, Wagoner's body was found halfway between and West Camp. The team that found him reburied his body in the same spot and marked the grave with a large cross. Wagoner had been 50 years of age and a heavy smoker, and it was believed that he had died of heart failure brought on by overexertion. Willemsen was 23 when he died, and it is estimated that his body, and Wagoner's diary, now lie under more than of accumulated ice and snow. Continental Drift Theory Alfred Wagoner first thought of this idea by noticing that the different large landmasses of the Earth almost fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. The continental shelf of the Americas fit closely to Africa and Europe, and Antarctica, Australia, India, and Madagascar fitted next to the tip of southern Africa. But Wagoner only took action after reading a paper in 1911 and seeing that a flooded land bridge contradicts ISO's Tosi. Wagoner's main interest was meteorology, and he wanted to join the Denmark-Greenland expedition scheduled for mid-1912. He presented his continental drift hypothesis on January 6, 1912. He analyzed both sides of the Atlantic Ocean for rock type, geological structures, and fossils. He noticed that there was a significant similarity between matching sides of the continents, especially in fossil plants. From 1912, Wagoner publicly advocated the existence of continental drift, arguing that all the continents were once joined together in a single landmass and had since drifted apart. He supposed that the mechanisms causing the drift might be the centrifugal force of the Earth's rotation, or the astronomical precession. Wagoner also speculated on seafloor spreading and the role of the mid-ocean ridges, stating, the mid-Atlantic ridge, zone in which the floor of the Atlantic, as it keeps spreading, is continuously tearing open and making space for fresh, relatively fluid, and hot sima rising from depth however, he did not pursue these ideas in his later works. In 1915, in The Origin of Continents and Oceans, Wagoner drew together evidence from various fields to advance the theory that there had once been a giant continent which he named, German for primal continent, analogous to the Greek Pangaea, meaning all lands or all earth. Expanded editions during the 1920s presented further evidence. The last edition, just before his untimely death, revealed the significant observation that shallower oceans were geologically younger. Reaction In his work, Wagoner presented a large amount of observational evidence in support of continental drift, but the mechanism remained a problem, partly because Wagoner's estimate of the velocity of continental motion, 250 km/h was too high. The currently accepted rate for the separation of the Americas from Europe and Africa is about 2.5 km/h. While his ideas attracted a few early supporters such as Alexander Dutoit from South Africa, Arthur Holmes in England and Maludin Milankovic in Serbia for whom continental drift theory was the premise in investigating polar wandering, 
the hypothesis was initially met with skepticism from geologists who viewed Wegener as an outsider, and were resistant to change. The one American edition of Wegener's work, published in 1925, which was written in a dogmatic style that often results from German. Translations was received so poorly that the American Association of Petroleum Geologists organized a symposium specifically in opposition to the continental drift hypothesis. The opponents argued, as did the Leipziger geologist Franz Koschsmatt, that the oceanic crust was too firm for the continents to simply plow through. Wegener's fit of the supercontinent at the 200 isobath, the continental shelves, an idea he had since at least 1910, was a good match. Part of the reason Wegener's ideas were not initially accepted was based on his proposed fit of the continents, with Charles Scutchard commenting. The comment was based on the misapprehension that Wegener's fit was judged along the current coastline, while Wegener was using the 200M isobath. Wegener, who was in the audience, made no attempt to defend his work, possibly because of an inadequate command of the English language. Supporters such as Toit, also contributed to this misunderstanding of the method of the continental fitting, commenting, after Wegener's death, most persons view the continental shelf as an integral part of the continental block, and criticize Wegener for endeavoring to fit together the masses by their present coastlines instead of by the submerged margins of the shelves. In 1943 George Gaylord Simpson wrote a vehement attack on the theory, as well as the rival theory of sunken land bridges, and put forward his own permanentist views. Alexander Dutoit wrote a rejoinder in the following year. Modern Developments The tectonic plates of the world were mapped in the second half of the 20th century. In the early 1950s, the new science of paleomagnetism pioneered at the University of Cambridge by S. K. Runcorn and at Imperial College by P. M. S. Blackett was soon producing data in favor of Wegener's theory. By early 1953 samples taken from India showed that the country had previously been in the Southern Hemisphere as predicted by Wegener. By 1959, the theory had enough supporting data that mines were starting to change, particularly in the United Kingdom where, in 1964, the Royal Society held a symposium on the subject. Additionally, the 1960s saw several developments in geology, notably the discoveries of seafloor spreading and weighted even eof zones, and this led to the rapid resurrection of the continental drift hypothesis and its direct descendant, the theory of plate tectonics. Maps of the geomorphology of the ocean floors created by Marie Tharp in cooperation with Bruce Heason were an important contribution to the paradigm shift that was starting. Wegener was then recognized as the founding father of one of the major scientific revolutions of the 20th century. With the advent of the Global Positioning System, GPS, it became possible to measure continental drift directly. Awards and Honors The Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research in Bremerhaven, Germany, was established in 1980 on his centenary. It awards the Wegener Medal in his name. The crater Wegener on the Moon and the crater Wegener on Mars as well as the asteroid 29227 Wegener and the peninsula where he died in Greenland, Wegener Peninsula near Amanek, are named after him. The European Geosciences Union sponsors an Alfred Wegener Medal and honorary membership for scientists who have achieved exceptional international standing in atmospheric, hydrological, or ocean sciences, defined in their widest senses, for their merit and their scientific achievements.